Dan, clarify ko lang po, hindi ganong kalayo ang edad namin ni Dan. <laughs> Parang sinabi niya na kuyang ko, but seriously, uh, Dan is one of those people that are close into my heart. And so thanks, Dan, for that uh, magabagbag pusong uh, introduction. Magandang gabi. Those of you probably don't know me, I'm Ikoy, and uh, I'm, um, I've been part of this ministry for over 10 years. Gano'n ko kamahal tong ministry nito. And, uh, and I was trying to recall what, what fuels that, that desire, that, that opportunity and the privilege to be part of a ministry like that. And as I look back into my past more than 10 years, uh, I'm at just surprised with, uh, with the privilege of being able to be part of something that long. And when I look at back at that, I realized that it wasn't really me who really wanted to be here. It wasn't really me who, who made this thing possible. It's really just because I, day by day, I try to really honor the Lord. And because of doing that, that's when um, the Lord fuels uh, the privilege of being part of this. And so I just want to welcome you all to Big Fridays. You know, Hindi ko na malayan, sorry, hindi po kasi ako nanonood ng TV masyado eh. Hindi ko pala alam na last day pa lang ngayon. Ngayon ko na nalaman na last day. So ang ganda pala ng timing. You know why? Because the timing really boils down to this thing. I know there are people here who might be married. Ah, so please excuse me when I use examples that are primarily focused on singles. Hindi uh, ko na kayo papagtaasin ng kamay if you're married and you're here. But I just want to welcome you. I know there are a couple of you are, who are here who are here, okay. Yeah, can you hear me better? Okay, can you hear uh, that are here? So, the reason nagkataon na nagkasabay, and I think that's God's plan, kasi hindi ko lang nalaman din, nasabay, is because of this. A single person will often be confronted with so many decisions in their day-to-day life that would ask them to choose between what they want, what they want to pursue, and what Jesus wants in their life. Every single day, every single hour, you would be confronted with decision makings like that. And that's why here in Big Friday, we want that decision making to be simple. Here in Big Fridays, what we want to establish is a movement of single men and women whose decision making is driven by godly wisdom by biblical principles. So when you come to that point in line when you need to choose, do I choose myself or the world or do I choose Jesus? The natural tendency is to choose Jesus. That's why we gather every Friday. And that's why we want to invite you here. Things that we discuss here are really designed to help each one of us in this very crucial stage of our life. I say crucial because I don't see any any stage in the life of a person where you could be so physically mobile, physically mobile, you have the capacity to do what you want, you have your own time, your pursuits in life are varied and really deep, and all of these things provide a wonderful opportunity where you could really do what God wants you to do. And that's why we're excited, that's why Dan said we're excited because of there are a lot of you here joining us. And, uh, and I know tonight is a very top, it's a topic and it's a series. By the way, hindi tayo mauubusan. Apat na linggo natin pag-uusapan to. Apat na biyernes. Okay, so kung talagang kaya kayo nandito kasi puso ang kailangan natin pag-uusapan, apat na biyernes natin ito pag-uusapan. So hindi kayo mauubusan ng pag-uusapan. Next week, we'll give you a chance to even talk among yourselves. Kasi ngayon hindi kayo naka, naka-set up ng nakamesa. Because today is the first day. Next week, when you come back, this will be set up in tables already where after a person speaks, you will be able to be given a chance to process and talk about your fellow singles, what that impact, that message is in your life. But tonight, we're going to talk about something that is really close to our hearts. Puso. You know? Puso. Nung nilalabas namin yung marketing ng ng Love Not. By the way, alam niyo na ba yung pangalan ng series na to? It's called Love Not. Okay? Bakit Love Not? 
Uh, kasi daw, ang, bakit ang relationship parang may sakit? Why? Kasi hindi lang po sakit physically aray na I'm sure a lot of you could be, a lot of you could empathize with. But more seriously, a deeper concern is that relationships oftentimes are being done in a wrong way. Sobrang wrong way. I look around, I look around my life. I look around my people, my friends' life. I look around the people in the world. The relationships are so flawed. Ang sobrang pangit. Ang sobrang gulo. And, I can't, and, and, and the need to fix that is so heavy in our hearts because if we, the singles who are here, who's preparing to go to the next stage, if we are not getting it right, if we're not getting it right, if you who are interested to know about these things are not getting it right, paano pa yung mga nasa labas na walang ka-opportunity opportunity to talk about these things? And that's why it's of critical importance that we get this right. We get this relationship thing right. Because all around us are relationships that are struggling. Relationships that are really down the drain. Relationships that are hardly barely hanging on thin thread. Why? Because they have a wrong idea of what love is. In our prayer, that we will all, in the next couple of weeks, really try to understand, ano ba talaga yung magmahal? Eh, gusto, gusto natin magmahal, hindi naman natin alam paano magmahal. Worst thing is, mahal tayo ng mahal, meaning hindi mahal, expensive ha? Nagmamahal tayo, nagmamahal, pero the wrong way. And that's why nakakaroon sakit ng puso. Let me give you some stats. Extramarital affairs in the Philippine society. Extramarital affairs. Ano ibig sabihin nan? Relationship outside marriage. Meaning, merong kirida in Spanish. Merong kabet in Tagalog. Merong mistress in English. In short, salot. Okay? <laughs> merong ganon, right? And the culture of polygamy in the Philippines was, is worsened because there are several factors in our society that have glamorized mistresses, upgrading their status to alpha male. Meaning, pag isang lalaki, mayroong kabet, isa, dalawa, ang tingin sa kanya, macho. Society ito, ha? Pero ang tingin sa mga tao, straight one wife, one girl, one person relationship, ang tingin sa kanya, wimp. Or badui. And it's appalling that people think that pag marami kang uh, kerida, pulasi, wala, sulasi, uh, pulasisi, or mistress, or whatever you want to call it, is you're in. And it, it pains me. It pains me to see while the people out there think of this as something that is normal. Folks, I wouldn't be surprised. Look around you. I mean, don't raise your hands. Huh? But who among you currently in your family right now have one way or the other had intermarital affairs or infidelity in one moment in time. In my family, a lot. Both my father's side and both my mother's side. And I'm sure if I'm gonna ask each one of you, nagkaroon na ba ng opportunity or sitwasyon sa pamilya nyo na naging, ano ba tagalog ng infidelity? Ha? Pagkikiapid? Wow! <laughs> na nakikipag-apid sa ibang tao I am sure most of you would raise your hand. Why? Because the Philippine numbers states that more than half of the families in the Philippines right now admitted in one way or the other that there has been some sort of infidelity that happened in their life. 50%! Ang alam natin sa USA nang yun. Dito rin sa Pilipinas, nangyayari yun. Kaya po itong, itong series ito about relationship, Napakabigat sa puso namin. Kasi hindi lang to drama. Hindi lang to teleserye. Katotohanan po to. It's the reality that is around us. And the need, the critical need, is for us singles to understand what's driving that type of behavior. Why is people always looking for something outside marriage, outside relationship? Why? Because they're looking for something that they can't find. That's why they look around. And if we don't get it here in this room, how do we expect people outside to get it? Kaya importante po bumalik kayo dito. Kasi every single Friday, pag-uusapan natin, ano ba talaga magmahal? Ano ba talaga magmahal? You know, the people is that people nowadays, uh, the, the infidelity has been bowed over because some people, in, in media alone, for example, in media, 
I mean, in media, we have so many movies. Di ko alam to mga tuwak, sinunod ko lang ha. The other, no other woman. Nakarad ba yun? The mistress. Ano mga yan? But these movies, you know, we cringe on why are we showing this adulterous movie flicks. But in reality, folks, it's happening. So here's, the, here's my point as we start this series. There is a bigger need than just the drama you want in your life. There's a bigger need that you and I, we need to understand. There is a critical need for us to understand what it means to love, what it means to prepare for the next stage when we all get married, when we all have kids, when we all start teaching our kids what it means to really be a husband and a wife. You, us, we need it. Kaya ako nagpunta kayo dito because you want to feel the drama about love. Magkakaroon tayo ng drama, pero but more than that, it's really the deeper issues that we want to share to each one of you. That you are responsible for changing the curb outside. Change it. But the way to change it is you need to understand it. Annulment in the Philippines, the National Commission on the Role of Filipino Women, marital infidelity is one of the major causes of stress among Filipino couples. 36% of men and 2% of women, blitang women, ah, engage in extramarital affairs. That is a 40% jump. Men, bakit ganon? Bakit tayo ganon? Why? Mali kasi understanding sa relationship eh. Mali ang understanding paano magmahal. Bigay ng bigay ng mahal, hingi ng hingi ng pagmamahal, mali yung binibigay, mali yung hinihingi, ano ngayon ngayon, disappointed. That's the root cause. It's not about wrong husband and wife, wrong chemistry. It's not about choosing the wrong husband and the wrong wife. Of course, that's a factor. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the root cause why there's so much problem in marital problems right now is because men and women don't know how to love. And that's why we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to talk about what it means to be really to love people. Online dating, another reason. Online dating for married men and women. Do you have heard about this? Online dating for married men, AshleyMadison.com. They're here in the Philippines. They have 30 million members around the world. There is one person every six seconds signing up for this. Ha! They're signing up for what? For extramarital affairs. Why is there so much celebration for things like this? Let me, let me, let me read to you what the president of this online dating for married person said. Philippines is long overdue. We think Philippines will be one of our most successful international markets for several reasons. Number one, we have studied the economic growth in the Philippines for the past 10 years. Second, the Philippines is the 12th most popular destination in the world. And the third, which really shocked me, is this. The reason why we're going to be popular here is because it is considered, the Philippines, huh, is considered a conservative society with strong religious heritage. Huh? Even because of our strong religious heritage, we are being groomed to be ripe for uh, online dating for married men and women. Why? Because the Philippines, being a predominantly religious country, the president of this company believes that it is not a hindrance. In fact, it is an advantage to the site. And when I hear stories like that, I cringe. I say, what are we doing? What are we doing to curb these things that's happening in the world right now? What can we do? First, we could talk about the truth. That's what we could do. We could educate people like you and me. So when we get to that stage, we will never be able to go to... By the way, you want to hear who the people are here? They are mostly... Nine, sorry, ah, malaki na naman. 90% are male. <laughs> married. Between ages to 40 to 45. By the way, wala pa kayo sa 40 to 45, hindi pa kayo target para kayo Kaya ngayon pa lang, ayusin na natin. Para pagdating doon, hindi na kayo magiging target market. Also, but what's, 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 what's shocking is that the women, here's, here's the me women. The women are ages 30 to 35 years old. They are classified into three groups. The first group are single moms who have children. They don't want to introduce a father figure 
That's why they seek a male companionship from time to time. The second is composed of single career women who are focused on their work and they don't want to be tied down to any relationship. And the third, the smallest, and yet the most shocking for me, is that what they call women who are vocational mistresses. Vocational mistresses. I mean, sabihin nun? Pag gusto mo lang, punta ka dun. Why? Because these people, these women, are career-oriented. They don't know what to do. They, they, they know what they want to get. But at the same time, they want to fool around. Ladies, what is our world going into? And that's why we need to understand what do we need to do? How do we fix the problem? Right? Alam niyo po ang time, ano pong tagline ng ano, itong online na ito. Ayoko sabihin yung pangalan kasi wala, baka mapunta pa sa utak niyo yung, yung, yung online to. But anyway, ito yung tagline niya. Life is short, have an affair. <laughs> Folks, I think the picture is pretty much clear. That there is a need. There is a need for you and I to understand what's happening. There is a need for you and I to understand what we need to do. There is a need for you and me to get involved, to curb this, this, this apparent uh, downfall and, and, and black hole to immorality. And that's why this series called Love Not is very, very important to us. And that's why, let me ask you one thing. Kailan ba nagkakasakit ang tao? Kailan ka nagkakasakit? Pag nasa stress ka, yes, magkakasakit ka niyan. Ano pa? Ano pa? Paano pa nagkakasakit ang tao? Huh? Low, sorry? Low immune system. Okay, thank you, sister. Low immune system. Yun ang, ang nangyari dito, kaya tayo nagkakasakit, pag hindi mo pina, inaayos ang katawan mo. Light? Payag ka ng payag ng stress. Low immune system. Natutuyuan ka ng, ng pawis sa likod. Totoo ba yun? Nagkakasakit pag natutuyuan ng pawis sa likod. Uh, yung mga ganun bang bagay. Uh, inuubo ka na, sinisipong ka pa, tapat ka pa ng tapat sa electric fan. Yung all of these things, right? In short, hindi mo inaasikaso ang katawan mo, kaya ka nagkakasakit. I've been speaking in Tagalog for quite some time. Is there anyone here doesn't understand Tagalog? Seriously? No, no, seriously, right? Are you punch? Oh, punch. Uh, translate, okay? Uh, I'll try to speak in, in English as much as possible. Uh, so when do we get sick? When do we get sick? Sikit na nagkakasakit. First, external factors. Second, internal factors. But more often than not, the reason why you get sick is because you don't care of your body. And the same principle applies to our heart. Do you know that? The same principle applies to our heart. Hindi mo kasi inaalagaan ang puso mo. You're not taking care of your heart. There are a couple of things that we don't do which leads to us having an unhealthy heart. And having an unhealthy heart, love not, Sakit ang puso leads to all other problems, physical, emotional, and more importantly, spiritual. And that's why it's key. We need to understand how do we fix our heart. And we're going to talk about the true biblical form of love, not the crooked, twisted definition of the world we live in. You see, when all of you are here, you know, all of you are here, what you're trying to tell me is that you want to be loved, right? Right? The reason why you're here is you want to be loved. But more often than not, when we say we want to be loved, we want to be loved the way we want to be loved. That's the, what, not, not the right kind of love. Because all of us are bringing in baggages here, baggages of emotions, of things we see outside, of things we see in our parents, in our brothers and our sisters, our previous experiences. We all bring this together here. And that's why when we talk about love, we hope people would admire us. People would treat us affectionately. Ano man, gusto-gusto natin eh. Someone that can embrace us, right? Yung pagutin na sa bahay, pagod. Laging, oh, kamusta ka na? Yung lagi natin magusto. All of these things that feeds our ego and vanity. But folks, in the next couple of weeks, I'm, we might disappoint you. Because love is not just that. We might disappoint you when we talk about what really is biblical love. When we go beyond the warm, fuzzy feeling and go into the hard-working need of loving. Hard-working. Paglalaban mo. Hard-working. Paghihirapan mo. Hard-working. Ibibigay mo lahat. 
By the way, hindi yung love is blind, ah. Na kahit alam mo nang mali na ginagawa, ginagawa pa. Oh, no, I'm not, we're not talking about that kind of love. We're talking about the true, biblical, supernatural love. In this series, we're going to talk about understanding what it means to love the biblical way. The reason why we don't care of our heart is because we don't know how to take care of it. And we don't know how to apply the different mix of emotions that barrage our soul daily. Your, your heart, your soul, are being barraged daily with different mix of emotions. Do you know that the Filipinos, the Philippines, in a recent research done in the States, I don't know the validity of how big the sample size is, but here's, here's the principle. The Filipinos answered, number one, to be the race where they feel they are most loved. Number one, we feel we're loved. We're loving people. We love everyone. Diba? Kahit ayaw na tayo, love pa rin natin. Right? Kahit inaapi na tayo, we still love them. That's the Filipino way. But amidst that apparent positive swing is an abyss of detrimental emotional behaviors that we all need to fix and we need all to understand. And what are these things? And the question is, what kind of love are we experiencing? And are we applying the right kind of love? This series, we're going to take us into four. So I share to you quickly. I'm just going to give you a brief uh, overview of what's going to happen. What's this type of love? Okay? What's it? Follow me in this example. What is this form of love? A person, very, very busy, very, very busy, he doesn't have time for anything else, sees that her friend or his friend is down. You're walking in the office or you're walking somewhere and then you saw a friend really down, miyak, crying, sobbing. And this friend, even though he or she is busy, stops what he's doing, goes to this person, talks to this person, grabs coffee, whatever, spends time understanding, hearing it out, and talking and spending time with him, kahit na busy, na busy siya. Anong klaseng pagmamahal yun? Huh? Care. Okay, close. It's called tender love. That's tender love. Yun ang madalas natin hinahanap. The tender love that I'm sure 99% of us here would want to have. Tender love. The second kind of love is this. A friend notices that he, he keeps on refusing. A friend says, you know what? Ayoko na na ma-excuse mo. Tama na. Lahat ng ginagawa mo, paulit-ulit na lang. All the things that you're doing keeps coming over and over again. You keep doing the wrong decisions. You keep saying you're going to change, but you never change. But I want to talk to you. I want to stop whatever we're doing. And you need to change because you need to know the truth. And the truth is you're doing stuff that really makes you miserable and the people around you miserable. Anong tawag sa pagmamahal na yun? Galing. Tough love, right? When you need to ask the difficult questions, when you're willing to risk rocking the boat. Alam mo, mga Filipinos, they love not rocking the boat. We're afraid of confrontation. We want everything to be smooth and sailing. Everything okay. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. But deep inside, he's wrecked. Oh, ano problema? Walang problema. But deep inside, she's crying out in pain. The problem is, we mix up the tough love and the tender love the wrong way. Eh, kaya meron ng kailangan ng tough love, tender love ka pa ng tender love. Hindi talaga maayos ang buhay nun. At doon ko naman sa isa, kailangan na ng tender love. Tough love ka pa rin ng tough love. So what happens? Layo na ng layo. See what I'm driving at? And the third thing that we're going to talk about in this series is that when a person, you know, I have a friend, I have a friend, he gave up his promotion into a higher paying job because you know why he gave that up? Because he wants to spend more time with his family. Now, what type of love is that? A love that would say no. You know what? I, I know it's going to be better paying. I know it's going to be... a uh, an increase in a promotion, but you know what? I have to say no because I want to spend time with my family. What is that type of love? Huh? Sacrificial love. We're going to talk about sacrificial love where you're selfless. When you're going to think about the other before you, yan. 
Isa pinakamahirap yan. But the most difficult of all is this type of love. A girl was raped by many men and the girl was able to forgive all those rapists without filing a case, without having any consequences. Why? Because she believed that there is forgiveness in Jesus. Now, what kind of love is that? Radical love. The ultimate expression of love is the radical love, and the radical love that only flows from Jesus. So we're going to talk about those four things. Tender, tough, uh, sacrificial, and then radical. So let me ask you, if, ma- if we just get all these four things right, maintindihan lang natin what it means to love this way. I tell you, you will live in such a better place. Do you agree with me that if you get all of these four things right, I mean, of course, it's going to be impossible to get all those four things right, but at least have a semblance of knowing what to do, would you think it would prepare you better for your next stage in life when you are, are married? Do you think your future love, your husband or your future wife, would absolutely love it? That why do you know all of these things? Why? Because the Bible says so. And that's what we want. We want all of us to understand that. Okay, tonight... We're going to talk about tender love. Tender love. Mahal kita maging sino ka man. Sorry, hindi ako marunong kamanta. So hindi ko ito pwede kantahin. But it's a song. And, and we're going to talk about tender love. So uh, can, I, can I have some vocal exercises here, everyone? Vocal exercises. When we flash a verse on the screen, is it okay if you help read the verse on the screen? Is that okay? Okay ba yan? Okay, all right. I've been talking for 17 minutes straight. So okay lang naman siguro, you could say something also, okay? All right, everybody, read the most ultimate definition of love in the Bible. One of the most ultimate, okay? Kasi maraming, ulti- maraming good, hindi siya ultimate. One of the, okay? Everybody, can we read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1? Everybody, 1, 2, 3, go. I have nothing. Verse 3. It profits me nothing. Folks, verse 1 to 3 of this amazing chapter, verse 1 to 3, speaks about the importance of love. All right, let's continue. Verse 4 to 7. Everyone, 1, 2, 3, go. Love is patient. Continue, verse 6. Oops, sorry. Oops, sorry. Ano nga sa slides ko? Okay. So, anong verse tayo? Verse 6? Okay, verse 6. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoice with the truth. Verse 7, everybody. Bears all things, believe all things, hope all things, endures all things. Folks, verse 4 to 7 speaks of the perfection of love. If verse 1 to 3 speaks of the importance of love, verse 4 to 7 speaks of the perfection of love. And this amazing chapter ends in verse 13 that says, But now, faith, hope, love, abide these three but the greatest of this is love. And verse 13 talks about the permanence of love. Alam mo, kahit na labing limang daang beses ko nabasahin itong verse na to, and, n- n- hindi ko alam kung gano'ng karami ko doon na verse nabasa, pero maraming beses ko na siya nabasa, it always strikes me on what love is. Yan ang pagmamahal. But we're not gonna have enough time to discuss all the 13 verses tonight. So we're going to only talk about one verse in this amazing 13 verses. And that one verse is seen in verse 7. What does bear all things, believe all things, hope all things, endure all things really mean? 
Sino dito, and I want you to all to be honest, who among you here wants to really love more? Raise your hand. Wants to love more. So, yung mga hindi nagtatash na kamay, ayaw niya mag-love? Ano ba yan? Ano, lock, 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 lock. Okay. So, all of us wants to love more, right? Here's, here's my prayer. Why don't we pray? Lord Jesus, we thank you for this amazing time that you've gathered all of us tonight. Lord, as we talk about your word, as we talk about this single verse, this single foundational verse about what it means to really love other people, Father, our prayers that you will just open up our hearts and our minds to the fundamental truth of the amazing word in the Bible that you have said through the Apostle Paul. Father, our prayers, I take away all the things that are in our head, in our hearts, the heaviness, and allow us, Lord, to really understand, transform us by your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, when you read this, this verse, this amazing verse, what do you think about love? What do you think about love? Is it always ready to make allowances? When you think about this, is it always about trust? When you think about this, is it always about hope? When you think about and read this verse, is it think about enduring? You know, when I read this verse, what, what comes to my mind is that love is, love is um, full of trust. Love is full of hope. That if you love someone, you will be loyal to him. Look at bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. Wow. You will always believe him. You will always expect the best of her. And you will always stand in the ground defending him or defending her. That's what this verse is saying. But before we get carried away, allow me to just, again, put this out there, that this is not about blind love, right? This chapter speaks about love that does not rejoice in unrighteousness, right? This chapter also talks about rejoices in the truth. So if you have any vain thoughts running in your head right now, brothers and sisters, trying to tell you, oh, you know, pala bears all things, eh. You know, pala hope all things, eh. You know, pala endure all things, eh. Di okay na pala lahat, kahit na bulahin ako, kahit na lokohin ako, kahit na maglay sa akin. That could be something that is the enemy feeding your mind right now. But folks, when we go to that part when you are being fooled, when we go to that part when you are being lied and being manipulated, this is a game changer. That's a contract breaker, okay? This verse speaks of the love between a man and a woman who is in a relationship, in a husband and wife relationship in a brothers and sister relationship, in a father and mother relationship, in a brothers and sisters in Christ relationship. But the fundamental basic premise is it's based on the truth. Okay? Okay ba yan? Kasi baka may umuwi dito, oh, sinabi, oh, pwede pala, bears all things. Eh. So kahit na, binububog na ako, okay lang. Right? No, that's not what this verse is saying. Because you need to take it in context on what the entire chapter is saying on this chapter 13. All right? So let's continue. Love is always supportive, Right? Love never gives up. So we're going to talk about what are, the, what are these things. For, folks, what do you notice? What do you notice in these words? Ano yung paulit-ulit? All things, right? Why did Paul? Why did Paul did that? Why? What? Hindi na bears, believes, hopes, endures. But he kept on saying all things, all things, all things. And it's in the present tense. Why? Because the idea is that this is going to be a continuous lifestyle. The idea is that it's going to be a continuous behavior. So you cannot say, oh, tonight I bear all things, ah, tomorrow no more bearing. Oh, tonight ah, I'm enduring already. Ah. I am enduring in our relationship. Two years now, I endure the relationship. Ito, ah. After that, no more. It's not what Paul is saying. It's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is saying it has to be ongoing. It has to be a continuous lifestyle. That you, that, what, what the Bible is saying, you want to love? You need to teach that no matter how desperate the circumstance is, you will not give up. That's what this verse is saying. And you know, bears, bears all things. Bears, such an amazing word. Bears. What does bears mean? Bears all things. You know what's bear? Bear is like that picture. It's like, it's like a covering. It's like a hinge of protection. The original word is stego. 
as the word stego is to protect, it's to bear. So idea niyan, what the word bear means this. If that is the point of love, your love is bearing it. You're covering it. So that means you're not allowing anything to go inside. That means you keep anything from entering that love. So it's protective in nature. So if there's hostility from the outside, you will protect the one that you love. If there are gossips outside, you will protect the one that you love. If there are certain things happening the outside, you will protect the one that you're in love. It's not exposing them. But what do we do when we have love? We expose them, right? Alam mo yung asawa ko? O alam yung kaibigan ko? Dako, saksaka ng daldal yan. Alam mo yung kaibigan ko na yan? Mga atin natin ng Bible study, hindi naman nagbabago yan. So instead of protecting the idea of bear all things, we're exposing them. Bears all things means you also need to put it in a platform. That means you're ready to endure. That means you're ready to take what is needed. From the definition, we see that the picture of love protects the beloved, protects the beloved by covering them and concealing them. And that also means that when you protect them and you conceal them, there's, there's only one enter and exit to that love. And that is you. Amazing principle. You don't love. Love na tatakpan mo. Love na imbis na siya masaktan, ikaw na lang ang masaktan. You know, I, I have a story. You know, one, one, one way that we would protect the people that we love is that we don't actually allow them to understand and let them see everything. Look at parents. When they see their kids, what do they do? What's their first instance? What is their gut reaction when something bad is happening? They cover their kids. They protect their kids. Labas mo anak mo. Labas mo. Palag-aaway. Labas mo anak mo. Why? Because they don't want to see. That's the natural tendency to protect. Yun po yung sabihin ng bears all things. You, your love for your brother, for your sister, for your husband, for your wife, for your boyfriend, for your girlfriend, it has to be protective. It has to be, in a sense, you know, it's, it's, it's slow to respond to exposure. You're slow to respond to exposure. I have a friend, you know, he's in a relationship, and every time that I see him, he keeps on telling me about the flaws of, of his girlfriend. And I said... Uh, and I said to myself, obviously, he wanted to just share something out, but it was in context of accountability. It was in the context of prayer. It was in the context he just wanted to vent out. But I realized, if you want to really bear all things, those are the things that you keep to yourself. Love is that beautiful virtue that throws over a cloak of silence what is displeasing in another person. Displeasing. You know, one of the things that I have been learning from my friends who have recently got married, they keep on telling me that one of the things that we need to all adjust is that the ability to accept someone for who, or sh- who he or she is. That's one of the greatest challenges, accepting the little intricacies of a person. And bears all things, talks about that. It's not magnifying the faults. It's not magnifying the mistakes. It's not, it's not letting go of the mistakes. I'm not saying that. But you do not magnify it. Because why? You're always thinking of the best. Love does not broadcast another's problems to everyone. Love doesn't run, out, run down others with jokes. You know, I have uh, my titos and my titas. When, they, when we have in a family reunion, my tito will always joke about the inefficiency of my tita when it comes to cooking. Lagi nang sinasabi, ay, yung, yung siya yan! Ay, buti, hindi ko na sabi pangalan. Naka-record pala to. <laughs> yan siya yan! Uh, ang hina magluto niyan! Hindi masarap ang ulam niyan! Siya ba nagluto? Ay, hindi ko kakain! I mean, he wants to jokingly say that. But that's not bearing all things. That's exposing all things. And so folks, how do we apply that into our lives? There are certain things that you keep among yourselves. There are certain things you keep between you in your relationship. Kayo yung dalawa lang. Maglabasa kayo ng samahan ng loob, kayo dalawa lang. Pwede nyo ka lang isama lahat ng tao, buong community, buong barangay. Because that's what it means when you say bears all things. 
authentic love continually seeks to cover and to protect. Love does not criticize in public. Love protects other people. It doesn't broadcast bad news. It goes second mile to protect another person's reputation. Love does not point every flaw out of a person that you love. That's what love means. Union bearing all things. Believes all things. What does believe all things mean? It implies that you see the best in other person. Alam mo, totoo lang, this is where I'm really having difficulty. Believes all things. Gagawa na ba yan? Believes all things. Lahat ng sinasabi, naniniwala ka. You know, this is, an, this is an amazing word. Believing all things is an amazing word. Believing all things means you will give the other person the benefit of the doubt and you would choose to believe the best and not the worst of that person. Here's an application. You come along, you're walking. Narig mo, Uy, alam mo ba? Sinabi ni ganyan sa'yo? Ganito ka daw. You know, I heard. Somebody, man, is telling things about you. Is it true that you're like this, like this, like this? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Sinabi niya yun? <laughs> Did he actually say that? I mean, I kind of sensed that he really didn't like me, but I didn't want to... Th- so you start ranting and start ranting about... Even you haven't really talked to that person yet, you have condemned that person already. What believe in all things saying is this. When you hear those things, suspend it. Put it in a suspend file. Or better, give the best answer. You know what? I don't think he or she would say that. Or perhaps you did not hear him or you did not hear her correctly. Or the context that she's saying it, you do not really understand. Or you're not well informed. All of these things. But why? The principle. The principle is you believe the best. You believe the best until all the evidences are there, present, before you decide. That's what I'm practicing. What I'm practicing is before I decide, I want to hear all evidences first. What's the evidence here? What's the evidence there? Give me all the things. And then once I get all of it, that's when I decide. And even though when I'm that, what the Bible is saying is this. Even though you have all the evidences, believe in the best. Hear up, no? Hear up. It's the... Believing, believing means you refuse, you refuse to any suspicion of doubt. Refuse with any suspicion of doubt. You know what that means? Because the flesh, our flesh, our main default is this, doubt. The fleshy desires of men and women like us, our default is to doubt. Look at husband and wives. Sa kagaling. Diyan lang sa friends ko. Friends ba talaga? Doubt, automatic. You're a boyfriend, you have a girlfriend, then the gir- boyfriend's late, then the girlfriend says, oh, why are you late? No, I really had to have overtime. In the girl's mind, overtime ba talaga? <laughs> why? Because that's the default. But love is not like that. Love means, okay, you're saying that you have an overtime, I will trust that you have an overtime. I'll trust that it's traffic. Na naman. Yan na lang excuse, traffic. But that's what believe all things mean. What he's saying is that love will believe unless otherwise proven. Wow, ang ganda. Love means you will believe unless otherwise proven. That means hindi love is blind. Of course, if he says he came from the office but he did not come from the office and you found out that he didn't come from the office, it doesn't mean you would believe it again because it is actually a lie. But what the Bible is saying, until you have all of those things, believe. And folks, let me tell you this. If our relationship is characterized by those things, bears and believes, can you imagine the amount of relationship that we have in and around us? Not even husbands and wives muna. Kahit, kahit brothers and sisters muna. Kahit office mates muna. Can you imagine the impact that will do to all of us? Believes in all things. Meaning he is patient when the, when love has no evidence it will believe the best so bears all things believe all things so for this for this first two definition of love who among you are perfect 
Who among you are 75%? Who among you are afraid to raise your hand because we might feel that you're... But this, here's, here's the point. Here's my point. It's difficult. But we need to know what it feels to be right first. Let me repeat. We know it's difficult. But we need to know what is right first before we go and continue what it is. Okay, let's, let's, let's wrap this all up in the last two. Hopes in all things. Wow. Ang ganda nito. Hope in all things things means that you are what confident in the context of relationship it means that the one you love you look at that bright side of things you don't despair on things when you say you hope in all things when you say love hopes in all things it means that it's not pessimistic it means it is godly optimism that's what hope means you know I want to I wanna jump quickly to verse 13. Verse 13 says, But now, everybody can you read this together? Faith, hope, love, abide these three, but the greatest of this is love. You, you see why I said that? Faith, love, faith, hope, love. Faith, hope, and love is the tripod of love. Let me repeat. Faith, hope, and love is the tripod of love. What happens if one of the tripod's leg is taken out? What happens to the tripod? It crumbles. It falls down. It's the same principle here. That's why he highlighted in verse 13. When faith and hope and love functions together fully, it is at its best. But when one of these things fall apart, the entire definition of love crumples down. An example. You might have faith, but you do not have hope, but you have love, That would not be sustained. Why? Because you will give up. You will give up. If you don't have hope, you will give up. Because we all know that love is going to be difficult. We know that other people will be difficult. But here, more often than not, in this tripod, faith and hope and love, the tripod of hope is the one that's really always neglected. Always neglected. Kaya yung hope, importante po yan. Because hope is... Focus not on ourselves, but, fo- but folks, hope is focused on God Himself. Not on, our him- not on ourselves, but God and Himself. And lastly, endures all things. Hupomone. What does endure mean? Endure. What does endure mean? Endure is this. Sorry, let me give you an example first. What would you feel... What would you feel if I ask you to carry this, this, this speaker? The speaker na to, ah. Carry it. Bigat to. Example only. Bigat. And then you're going to bring this to the other side of CCF. And then you're going to hold it. And then you're going to only bring it down when I tell you to bring it down. What would you feel if I ask you to carry this speaker and bring it to the other side of CCF? Here's what you're going to feel. When you carry this, bigat, ha? When you carry this, bigat. Ah, ah, bigat. Bago ka dumating doon, ang nasa isip mo is, I just want to get there because I want to get it over with. Yun ang iniisip mo. I want to bring that to that place and get it over with and bring the speaker down. Because that is what is being asked of me to do. That's our natural tendency. But endurance, endurance is this way. This is Endurance. You're going to carry this, bring it all the way there. But while you're doing it and you reach that point, you're not going to bring it down. You want to give up, but you don't want to bring it down. Why? Because there is something that you want to achieve out of this. You do not want to give up because there's something you want to achieve out of this. At yun yung enduring. When you endure, you don't give up. When you endure, you carry on because you want to achieve something. And that something is love. That something is love to people. And that's why the idea is to continue despite the resistance, despite the opposition. And so how do we do that in applying it to our lives? Folks, when you are in a relationship, you will endure times of pain. When you are in a relationship, you will, in, you will suffer 
there's going to be self-deprivation. There's going to be loss. There's going to be sometimes anger. Sometimes there's going to be a lot of selflessness. And, and if you don't have endurance, patay. When you don't have endurance, you give up. That's why we see so many failed marriages. Because people give up. We have so many failed relationships. Because people give up. There's so many challenges in terms of husband and wife, uh, brothers and sisters, office mate relationship, stress and trigger and friction, and people give up. You know, what's the, um, you know what's the bad thing about giving up? When people give up, they don't actually say, I give up. They don't actually say that. What do they do? They isolate themselves. This is the worst kind of giving up. They would isolate themselves and let the relationship drag on slowly being isolated until the point that there's no more love left. Why? Because people give up. But the Bible says, don't give up. Endure. Endure. Because when you endure all things, it means there's something better that's coming in at the end. Hupomone is the Greek term. It's a military term used for holding a vite. It's a military term. The word endurance is a military term used for people to stand man in the post. Parang doon ka, endure ka dyan, endurance ka, ready ka dyan, ganyan ka dyan. Pag may dumadaan, baril ka dyan, di ka pwede nga manis. When you give up your post, people will get hurt. Yun po yung endurance. When we give up, people get hurt. When husbands and wives give up, children get hurt. When people give up, other people get hurt. So to endure persecution is a patient, loving spirit that desire not to retaliate or reject. Ang ganda nun. Endurance means you don't desire to, to retaliate. Your desire is to really just protect and love and hope and believe. Now that's endurance. So let me wrap this all in. Bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endure all things. In this statement, brothers and sisters, there is a power that allows it to happen. In this fourth statement, there is a power that makes it happen. And one of the things that I realize is that the more I study this, the more I meditate on this, the more I try to apply it in my life, the more I realize I can't do it. The more I realize that I need supernatural help. The more I realize that there has to be someone that would make these things possible. And if you're going to look at Paul, bears all things, believes, hopes, endures. Look, Paul is not describing great works. He's not describing martyrdom. He's not describing... Uh, heaven and earth kind of movement? No. What he is discussing are small little steps for us to really bear. Small little steps for us to believe. Small little steps for us to hope. Small little steps for us to endure. Why? Why is that? Because why? Because if you cannot make it in the small stuff in life, how can you be ready for the bigger challenges of love? I hear a lot of people telling me, Alam mo, Ikoy, I want to get, get married. I demand to get married. I'm ready to get married. Why? I have so much love to give. I don't have anyone to give it to. Ang tanong is this. Do you really know what it means to love? Because the sad fact of the matter is, we all want to love. We all want to be loved. But we're getting it wrong in why and how we should love. And that's why here, bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. And here's the thing that I realize. All these things, bears, hopes, believes, endures, all of these things is also speaking to me on my relationship to God. For me, it's also speaking about my relationship with Jesus. He's telling me, Ikoy, you need to bear all things. Ikoy, you need to believe in all things that I'm saying you, to you. 
Ikoy, you need to understand that you need to hope in me, Ikoy. And Ikoy, you need to endure because our relationship, Ikoy, is not going to be easy. If you say you want to follow me, if you say you want to follow Jesus, it's not going to be easy. There are certain things that you want you to bear. That means you need to protect this relationship. When people are telling you, stop going to Bible study. And have Friday Bible study. You need to protect that and say, no, I want to do this. And a relationship means believe. Why are you going to a Bible study? You need to believe there's something in this relationship with Jesus that allows me to hope. And then lastly, there's going to be stuff that Jesus will ask you to do. Right now, I'm sure you have been burdened on what you should do about love. And you know, I, it's so difficult. But the Lord is saying, Ikoi, endure. And that is how you and I would really love one another. Mahal kita, maging sino ka man. Can we really say this? Huh? Can we really say this? How can we truly love? How can we truly love without envy? Pwede ba yun? I mean, anybody who's been in love here, have you never been envious? Have you ever been without a quick temper in your love relationship? Have you never seek your own interest? Have you not think about the evil in someone in your relationship? I'm sure you always have think about that. Why? Because that's how we are. And in ourselves, we have no power to change this. And that's why it doesn't work. It doesn't work you sitting there and listening to me and telling yourself, I'm going to be strong in this. It doesn't work that you sitting there, you're going to tell yourself, I'm going to will myself in doing this. It's not going to work for you sitting there and telling yourself, you know what, what he's saying, I will apply that into my life on my own strength. If you're there and that's what you're thinking about, folks, you're dead wrong. Because all of these things are only possible through the amazing power of Jesus. That's the key. That's the secret. That's what we go behind. That's, that's, what, that's what fuels behind the power for us to do this. It is not some rara competition. I'm not gonna rara you. Yeah, yeah, kaya yan. Go, go, go. Hindi po ganun yan. Sooner or later, we need to get to the bottom of things. And the bottom of things is this. You can't do this. You can't. Only Jesus can do this in our lives. And it's why we keep on telling people, you want to enjoy relationships? Look at the ultimate relationship. If you're not fixing your vertical relationship, how can the horizontal relationships be well? How? It can't be. And that's why you need to understand, if we want love, we need more of Jesus in our lives. We need to run to the cross. We need to stand there. We need to tell him, Lord, I want to look to you because I can't do this. I want to stand next to you and I want you to fill my heart with so much love. You know what? Kasi pag puso mo, punong-puno pag mamahal ni Jesus, then it becomes possible. When your heart is filled with the love of Jesus, then all of these things become possible. You bear all things, you believe all things, you hope all things, and you endure all things. And your life will begin to change. Your life will begin to change as Jesus takes center stage in your life. And when you see that naturally overflowing, that's when you tell yourself, it's not really me. It is Jesus who's fueling this. And so I want to close us in a word of prayer, right? But in our word of prayer, I want you to think first again of the amazing verse 7 and allow yourself, what are the things that I need to really apply in my life? What are the things that I really understand from how it needs to bear, how it is to really believe, how it is to really to hope, how it, it is to really endure? And as I close this in prayer, I want you to meditate on how that actually should apply into your lives. Shall we all bow our heads in prayer?